Hey, welcome back to the Joe Silverback Show. I'm your host, Joe Bunton. And today we're going to be talking again about thinking and about capitalism, about economic growth and uh, medical technology. First and foremost is, do we think for ourselves? Do we think for ourselves? Do I think for myself? How much do I think for myself? And how much do I let other people do the thinking for me? I am proposing that 90% at least of the thinking is done by others that we accept and just go along with. I'd be surprised how many people there are who actually think about 10% of what they believe in and what they actually act upon in their beliefs. Big, big guys, this is big and it is big. And I'm pointing the finger and I'm pointing the finger because anything that happens in our life that we haven't decided to do something about and change especially in relationship to our belief system, especially in relationship to our behavioral system, is all pointed back to us. It all comes back to cogito ergo sum. I think, therefore I am. I am, therefore I am a thinking human being. And even though that was something that uh, is, uh, philosophized and became part of the mainstream a couple hundred years ago. How relevant is that today when technology and the contracts that we sign are doing all the thinking for us? I think it's a serious problem. I agree that it's a serious challenge for me as a human adult. Uh, I signed contract. I've signed contracts all the time with technology. I belong to institutions that establish laws and rules in my community, and I'm part of the citizenship of the United States. All based on contracts that I didn't create myself, but that implicitly I accept. So. How does this connect to the economy? This connects to the economy in a primary way, which is that we today, we moderns today, doesn't matter if you're in China, if you're in Russia, if you're in Cambodia, if you're in the United States, if you're in Canada, if you're in Mexico, if you're in Honduras, throw the dart. If you're in Africa, throw the dart. Universal field theory, universal principle that we have accepted is that all economic growth is good. Oh, you don't believe that. All economic growth is good. You believe that. You accept that. I believe that. I accept that. And none of us challenges that. And none of us challenges that through our behavior. Or if we are some unusual person who has challenged it, we are really, really on the fringe and we're considered on the fringe. So consumerism is what makes economic growth happen. The more we consume, the more the economy grows, the more the economy grows, the more companies expand and grow and create more products and we keep consuming. What percentage of our time is actually looking at the products that we're taking in and consuming? Just look around your house. What percentage of the plate of the products that you have do you actually use? And how invaluable are they to a peaceful life? How invaluable are they to a wholesome life? How invaluable are they to your sense of self-worth and self-identity? They're huge. They're huge. They're everything. Otherwise, you wouldn't keep doing it. Or if you're like me, maybe you just realize, like my mentor said, when he weighed his food, I said, what, what do you mean you weigh your food? He was such he was a skinny old man. I met him, I was 24, he was 75. He was a skinny old man. So what do you mean you weigh your food? He said, he smiled at me and he said, 
I am a glutton. That measuring my food helps me control <laughs> what I eat. Okay, so one of the principles that the silverback is talking about is controlling our actions and behaviors and the way we think. Just, just, just think about that just for a little bit. Controlling my own behaviors. Controlling the thoughts and behaviors. I'd like to see somebody do that for one whole day. Pay attention to your thoughts for one whole day and see if you're in control or see who's in control, especially as it relates to consumption. Consumption of everything to satisfy our gluttony, to satisfy our craving, our emptiness, our hollowness, our shallowness, our superficiality. Until we can understand that we are deeply controlled, that we are just going along with the flow of things 90 some percent of the time, uh, we cannot change anything. Only when we accept that we are not in control can we begin the process of getting control of this and this and this. And it's critical. It's an amazing thing to feel in control of our thoughts and our behavior and our actions. So, the, the concept that we believe in most, that our behavior in society, in all these societies that I've discussed already, the concept that we believe in most that's universal to all of us is there's nothing but good in economic growth. And the more the economy grows, the better life becomes. Hmm. That's interesting because as the economies of the world have skyrocketed into unheard of economic growth for all levels of society, where the poor are elevated out of poverty more than at any other time in history, why is not the satisfaction factor increasing with the economic growth? So let's look at that thought. Does economic growth and satisfaction factor, do they run parallel lines? Or is there a convergence where something begins to change as the economy grows with satisfaction. I don't come from a pork place. I come from one of the wealthiest places on the planet and we suffer tremendously from depression, from suicidal thoughts, from high anxiety, from worrying about tomorrow. And I believe that it's connected to where our attention is most. And our God has been equated with our economy. Just simply ask yourself, will you ever stop making more money? If I were to hand you $100,000 and you knew that you could live at a certain level of existence for the next 10 years in complete freedom to have the solitude I talk about, have the walks in nature that I talk about, have the quality of time with your loved ones that I talk about, would you choose that over reinvesting that to create more wealth? Or spending it on things, knowing that you're gonna to have to keep working to make more money to buy more things. That's a challenge to all of us, and it's deeply, deeply more powerful than almost any other consideration we have. Secondly, as I've pointed out before, our faith and belief in modern technology is stronger than our faith and belief in God. 
okay. You throw your darts and your bows and arrows at me and say, but but I'm a believer. I believe in God and uh, and God is my salvation and God is going to do this for me and I'm going to have this happen. And all I got to ask you is, if you were able to bypass creation and tomorrow be able to choose what you want for your child by just pushing bun buttons on a screen and saying, um, I want my child to be blonde hair, blue eyed. I want my child to be brunette and brown eyed. I want my child to have this kind of IQ. Or you want to throw your hat in the ring with God and creation. Where would you throw it? Next question. Next question. Because I know you'll try to wiggle out of that. Next question. If I'm believing in God and a transcendent being and a supreme being and a higher order, and I believe that this higher order is something that connects me to my sense of higher purpose in life, do I put my faith in God over the new technology in 20, 30 years that's going to allow me to live to 500? Now, you can, you can argue, as some do, that, well, God created man in his own image and likeness so that, uh, you know, we can accept anything that man creates. Come on, guys. Come on. This, this we know is just a foolish argument. The reality is, is that technology is our God. We went from, we went from Homo sapiens, who was had no electricity and it was dependent upon let there be light, to science giving us automatic lights that we could have on 24 hours a day. So then we were dependent upon what? Technology, not on God. We weren't dependent upon God's light coming up every morning and going to sleep at a certain time of night. So our actions and behavior became connected to the technological advances and those technological advances have now become data and information and constant constant creation and recreation of the self creation and recreation of the self in my technology i become joe silverback i can become anything i want i can become joe Axe murder killer. I can become Joe uh, giving to the poor down in Mexico. I can create whatever I want on on virtual reality, and virtual reality is coming to a place where you're gonna be, your kids are, and you are gonna be able to plug in something and go to other universes and other worlds. If you think if you think online, if you think online. Uh, Games are, are big now. Wait until, you know, your kid can actually be inside the game, moving the players around and actually feeling like he's having conversations with real people. And where does he then sort out who you are as his parent or who his neighbor is as a living being when he can just go to wherever he wants? So, our faith and belief in technology is surpassing and supplanting our faith and belief in nature and a nature created by a creative force, creative intelligence that we call God. We went from let there be light to the light switch, from looking up to God to looking up to human beings. So humanism replaced faith in the gods, faith in the supreme God, and technology is now replacing humanism. Faith in God, faith in the human brain, human brain creating technology whose algorithms are surpassing ours and that's where we're placing our faith so 
we started off by talking about thinking. And I started off by a simple challenge to ask you a simple question. What thoughts are your own? Do you have any thoughts that are your own? Do you know any thoughts that you came up with that weren't given to you by the technology that's pumping information out faster than anybody can consume it? When was the last time you sat at the seashore, sat in the canyon, sat in your backyard and read a book and had an aha moment from an idea inside a book or you were writing, just processing your own thoughts and coming to understand who am I? What are my thoughts? What are my beliefs? What are my values? Who am I? What do I want? Where am I going? How am I going to get there? What's my belief in God? What's my relationship to nonstop economic growth? What's my relationship to technology that's going faster than the human brain can keep up with it? and the human value system can give a value judgment to this technology. I would wager that if you're like most of us, it's close to zero. That's the silverback challenge. Know thyself, spend time in solitude, spend time reading something meaningful that's stimulates the thinking process and start process writing so you come to understand yourself before you lose yourself completely with a technology that is controlling everything, including your thoughts. <laughs>